it has been about four months since I had my last guest on the podcast. In my opinion, he is one of the most inspirational people that I know of. And to me, he is a good reminder that no matter what you've been through in your life, no matter what challenges or obstacles that you've had to endure, anything is possible with the right mindset and with the right amount of work ethic. I'm talking about, of course, Will the Franchise Dickie. Will, always a pleasure, my man. It is always an honor to talk to you. And welcome back, dude. Like, I can't, it, it seems like I only talked to you yesterday, but then I look back at YouTube and I'm like, dude, it's been like five months since I talked to that guy. Five months of clicking up. Hell yeah. First off, shout out. Thank you for the merch, man. Love it. Love well, it. Everybody that follows my Instagram sees that I'd be repping you to the death. So I appreciate it, man. Appreciate appreciate the sponsorship, the, the member on the team, man. We would not be where we are unless we were like true to our roots and true to the people on the regional scene, just like you. That's my bread and butter. That's what I'm all about because it's people like you. These are the stories that need to get out there. And it's an honor to be able to have a small part in putting your story out there for people to hear about. Will, I want to talk to you because the last time we, ch we, we chopped it up, you're getting ready to fight Lamont Stafford at Rage in the Cage, Oklahoma City, 86. That was in March of this past year. And all you did was knock this dude out and take his belt. So I have to ask, man, like, number one, that was like a huge accomplishment for you. Like, you go into this guy's hometown. Nobody wants you to win. You're B-side. You have to drive all the way from Wisconsin down to Oklahoma City, like, I'm not talking a trip to Chicago, man. I'm talking Oklahoma City. Like, that's not close to you. That's There's not. weight cuts. There's all kinds of shit that you had to go through. Can you talk a little bit about just what was that experience like for you going from Wisconsin all the way to Oklahoma City and being brought in uh, because they wanted to feed Stafford? So they brought you in. You weren't supposed to win. You fucked up their all, all their plans, Will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was different, you know, uh... I guess my, I had a long talk with my management because, you know, it was a dominant win. It looked dominant, but I wasn't really happy with my performance. You know, I'm, a, I'm my biggest critic, but my, my, my manager at NCMGT, me and Mr. Cole, we're talking and that's the stuff you brought up. Exactly. Like I can perform if I have to drive 20 hours, I can perform cutting weight. You know, it, it was a tough weight cut and uh, like, and I did it mostly driving. You know what I mean? Shout out to coach B at Red Shapers and uh, Timmy over at Red Shapers, my striking partner who came with me and my girlfriend, uh, Stephanie. But uh, yeah, man, like I just went down there and uh, it was just, just everything was, I, I played all a thousand times in my head. Like, I guess it, it, it was a dominant win, but at the same time, like, I feel like I should be at the next level. So all these regional guys, I should be, you know, able to bite. So like as much as accomplishment it was from the, from, from my, from my, my perspective, it's just, it's just part of the plan. You know what I mean? Like, it's just part of the plan, you know, go in there and take care of work. I know now I can travel across the United States. I can, I can walk there. I could ride a bike there. It doesn't matter. The time issue does not matter because when it comes down to it, I'm a vet 13 years. When it's time to put in the work, it's time to put in work. And they were strict down there. I mean, there was no, I've heard of like, you know, the rules of like the rumors of no caffeine, none of that stuff before fights. I mean, they were checking bags. They were doing everything. There was no, I remember sitting there. It, it, it was such a big venue and such a long fight. I was the last fighter. I, I didn't fight till like midnight. Mm -hmm. And I, I had such a, a, a adrenaline dump. And, uh, and like, you know, I'm a coffee drinker too. I don't really take that pre-workout shit, but I'm a coffee drinker too. I just remember I was just so exhausted by the time, mentally, by the time I got to the cage, but you know, it worked out and I was fortunate and uh, we on to the next, we on to the next. I mean, it was something else. Like I, you know, I was trying to like think about all this and like put it in perspective. You took that man's belt, but like when you think about like for you, it's just another fight. Like, I was probably more excited about it than you were because I was like, holy, I was like, holy shit, he got a belt. That's so fucking cool. And you were just we like, we <laughs> we that's right. We got it, dude. Like we went in there and we took that shit. And I thought that was so cool. And, and for you though, like when you think back and I don't want to like rehash like our, our first episode, if this is the first time that you guys are hearing about, will definitely go back, check out that first show that we did, did together. You'll learn more about his background. But like when I think about like all the things that you've had to go through in your life, all the doubters, you know, we, we go through personal shit that makes sure uh, or that prevents you from being as active as you want to be. There's a four or five year chunk that's gone because of your personal issues. Right. You come back to the scene and by the time you come back, 
people are like, oh, bro, you're too old now. You've been away for too long. Like, yeah, you're good. But like, you're never going to be like a baller anymore. Like you're, you'll be like the king of Wisconsin. Sure. But like outside of that, bro, like it's, you're too old now. It's that time's come and gone. And so how did that feel to like, know that you proved a lot of doubters wrong and just by winning that man's belt, taking it for your own, like that had to have felt really good to shut up a lot of the critics. Yeah. But you know, with critics, man, they, they, they always come back with something else the next day, but uh, people need to get out of their mindset. You know what I mean? This is, this, you know what I mean? The mindset that they're in, like, you know, where you're hindered just by your thought process is ridiculous. You'll never hit, hit your full potential, your full heights. Like, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're only going as far as your mind will let you, you know what I mean? And uh, if, if, if age and stuff like that is, is, is what people thought were going to hold me back, then I'm breaking the dynamic, you know what I mean? And if a guy that came over or, or opiate addiction and had to go through everything I did, you know, self-inflicted what I had to do and come back and still make it to the show, you know, I mean, it's cliche as sound, anybody can do anything, man. And like, I'm, I'm a prime example. So um, I love my critics and I love my supporters more, but you need to have critics as, as much as you have the supporters because the critics will bring something to light. And if, if I do feel some type of way about it, I'm never mad at them. I just, I reflect on myself. Why am I mm -hmm. feeling like this? Why is something they said? Because it usually starts with me. And then I try to critique it and then I just run it down their throats. You know what I mean? Do, do you think at some point, like, because for people who like haven't seen you before, for people who just aren't aware, you're a big fucking guy. Like you're a freaking gladiator. You're, you're, you're huge. Right. And, and, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I wonder why people like would think like, Oh, he's too old. Like he, he can't do this. He can't do that. Because when you look at the UFC heavyweight division, you talk about guys, it, it seems like they're performing at a very, very high level in their late thirties and into their early forties as well. Realistically, I know I'm a couple years older than you, but realistically you could stay in this game at a heavyweight class, which you've done time and time again, right. you got another 10 years you could go if you felt like it. Yep. Yeah. 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 Like this, I always bring this to light, you know, you know, you know, UFC and the MMA is, is relatively new. We've been around, I think 22 years, but you know, people always subconsciously want to, re you know, reflect on like NBA or football, like a, a sport as a whole, right. you know, NBA, you got to jump 10 feet in the air and in, in, in the NFL, you got to run a four two forty. that declines with age. You know what I mean? It's just, mm -hmm. I don't care how much you stretch, how much you do with an age. Like fighting, that's so so great about fighting is that, uh, you know, it's 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 everybody's got fighter in them. It's in our DNA. You know what I mean? So like, I don't really think there's an age limit that hinders. Obviously, except the excess of like 50, 55, 60. Sure. That's, that's why I see a lot of these athletes going into the late 30s, early 40s, winning the title. I mean, look at Tech Sarah, uh, he light heavyweight. He just lost it, but he's won a rematch. Like yeah, 43. Yeah, and he looks good, dude. Looks amazing. Looks amazing. Like I just continue to take care of my body, eat right, stretch. You know, and you just your body's your temple. So this is my art, and I, I take care of my art. And 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 that's just one of the things I think you're bringing up a really good point because like when you're uh 35, 36 years old in the NFL, like if you're a quarterback, you're probably okay. But if you play any other position, people are like, ah, bro, you're like you're fucking old and shit. But it's like you you mentioned something important though. It's like yeah, if you're like a wide receiver or running back, you still have to be fast. Like, and that's why your prime comes and goes so quick. And by the time you're 30 years old, you're almost washed out because yep. it's that explosiveness that's so important. But in, in mixed martial arts, you got guys like Fedor, you got guys like Glover that are fighting at a very, very high level still and are well into their 40s. And that's what I like so much about it. Um, and that's why I get really excited about you because for you, the age thing isn't important to me. It's like, dude, like you're you're you can fight at a heavyweight class. And like, that is the one exception about this game at your, at a heavyweight weight classes. As long as you continue to evolve your craft and fight smart, you can be in this for a very long time. They're usually big and slow anyway. Not to be stereotypical. Right. But, like, but it's I'm true. In perfect, <laughs> I'm in the perfect zone, light heavyweight and heavyweight. My manager, Miss Nicole and CMGT, she had to bring that to light to me because naturally I'm a go, 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 go guy. So mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of stressing on my career. She's like, look at, Take a breath, calm down. And she told me we have time on our side. You do. And I just believed her. I just yeah. believed her and I see it. Like I just do whatever she says. You know, I got people calling me out and everything. I got, I got, I got all this stuff around me trying to pull me in every way. I stick to the structure. I stick to the plan my manager has for me. And she has a dynamic plan. We're sticking to it. And we are one fight away from 
reaching where we got to go. You know I, I, mean? I, I completely agree. It's really exciting. And I would go as far as to say, well, I know you keep talking about Bellator. You and I are kind of biased. We both are Bellator, Bellator boys Bellator. at the end of the day. I know that. I know that, but I look at it. I'm just like, bro, like a UFC heavyweight call up. That's not like so far fetched in my opinion, because yeah. you look at these UFC heavyweights. I'm like, bro, Will could go in there and would fucking smoke these guys. Yeah. I say that. And you, I know if I'm thinking it, I know you're thinking it too. I just, I just, I just love how Bellator moves. Just like you, Me you too. know, how they, they, they're just passionate about their fighters. They, it's just, I feel like I can make my mark, you know, realistically a lot more, like a lot better there. You know, I'm, I'm a realist, mm-hmm. man. Like I don't live in a, I don't live in a, make believe shit like the ufc would be like amazing because it's you know the top branch and stuff but man like it's not just making it the belt door we're gonna stay in bellator and then we're gonna shine so all my day ones like you and you know i mean like uh mike mikey magnum miss kimberly ike uh calf kick sports you guys have been with me for a minute now like you guys seen the, the struggle like the absolute struggle yeah like, i'm not even talking about my pre because that, that's just that's just i feel like that's a blur yeah like, when it really mattered now you guys stuck with me you especially, man. I, I appreciate everything, man. You got the. It doesn't matter how much merch we sell. If we sell any, I still know where you and I stand, and that's worth a million dollars, man. I yeah, appreciate I, that shit, man. It, it, it's an absolute pleasure. I get really excited to know that in my own small you way. Care of us, man. You, I, it's like, dude. I, it's like not taking anything away from you. You don't got a billion dollars, bro. Your mindset and your your heart, man. You like you give away money to us struggling, man. I really appreciate it, bro. Everybody it, sees it, man. It's uh, it's an honor to do that, and it, it makes me feel good to know that. We're able to help out with camp because this is a pay to pay sport. Um, th- this shit is not like th- you have to pay money to do this. Yeah. Like the money that you get, it like that's all out the door. It's already been spent by the I time break, you've even seen even. it. I don't even break even on fights. You're still losing money. Even, still even when you win, you still are losing Correct. money. So I'm with it. I know how much of a uh, of, of a struggle it is, not only to get these fights, but like just staying active, that's gotta be really difficult to do. Can you talk a little bit about how this opportunity uh, came up? Because we have a fight coming up on July 30th at Warrior Games 13. I know you're fighting in your uh, in your home state there in Wisconsin. I don't know where Ashland, Wisconsin is. I hope that's not too far away from you. Um, I hope it's, a, it, it can't be as bad as going to Oklahoma City. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Aspen's like three hours away from my house, man. I'm, I'm fighting in my backyard. Oh, that's um, nothing. I don't know. I, 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 it was a blessing. This, this whole fight was a blessing. The venue is like whatever. I'm not gonna talk about the venue, but we're just gonna go in there. And we're gonna take care of work, and it's right in my backyard. I can't ask for any more. So I just do what my manager says, and uh, if Aspen where she wants me to be, I trust it. I love it. I love the style. Um, I don't really know how I got this fight, but. I'm going to take like every other fight. He's the champ of the world. I'm going to go in there and run through him. I don't give a fuck if he got eight wins or 50 wins. You know what I mean? Like he signed on dotted line. I'm going in there. I'm not taking this guy lightly. And uh, I'm going to go take care of business. And uh, hopefully post fight, we're talking about the win and another belt throwing the wall. You are fighting a guy for people who don't know. Uh, this bout is happening in Ashland, Wisconsin. Is it happening on the Indian reservation up there? Uh, yep. Yes, okay, sir. so yes, I, I asked that because it seems like we're in a very similar situation as last time. I'm look, I looked at your opponent's topology. I th- I, I'm assuming he's native. It seems native. like his, uh, right, it seems like he's affiliated, like the tribe has their own gym or something like that up there. Correct. But let's look at, uh, you know, when I peel back the onion and I look at this guy, it seems like there are two versions of him. There's the can version of him that happened way later on in his career. This guy, it like you cannot keep this guy out of the ring. Like he had a lot of losses between 2013 and 2018. A lot of these losses he's getting finished too. He goes away for a little while. Um, and it looked like at the beginning of like 2019, that's where he starts to like look new and improved. Um, he's like the, the, the quality of opponents, you know, I'm not going to give him too much shit because it is what it is. You have to fight who's in front of you, especially on the regional scene, but he he's, he's getting the most important statistic. He's getting in the win column and he's finding a relatively good amount of success, uh, in his most recent bouts, he's been finishing, um, several guys. And I, it kind of makes me wonder like, okay, well, he knows who you are. And that to me is an indicator. If you're Chris, it's probably like, all right, well, I got nothing to lose. My, my, uh, 
right? My record's in the red, but if I can get a win over this guy, that is going to be huge for me. But were you still surprised when this was a name that came up and was offered to you? Were you surprised at all? I was more surprised when he asked for it. To tell you the truth, like the way he asked for it, that's why I don't really mess with him. You know, he went to the internet okay. and stuff, you know. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what his motive is, but uh, I appreciate it. I'm ready. You know what I mean? Please, please, like, um, I know he promotes his own shows and stuff like that, so maybe that's got mm-hmm. something to do with it. Maybe he's, like, the headline or whatever. But, you know, I don't know, like, you know, but I, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the option. Um, I know he fought in Bellator. I don't know how the hell that happened, but, you know, back in the day. But, you know, he's uh, – I'm not taking nothing away from the guy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, he's a fighter. He's number two behind me. You know, I'm number one in heavyweight, number one at 205. Regional scene rules really don't really mean shit, but he's behind me in the heavyweight somehow. So that, that makes it, that makes it up for a fight and stuff like that. But uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm excited to have a fight. I'm excited to have it in, in, in Wisconsin. So I appreciate that from him. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just, like I said, I don't take him lightly, re- regardless of the record. I know he's on a win streak, but I'm going to go in there and take care of what I have to do because looking at his record, it'd be easy for me to be like, nah, I got this. No, nah, I can just. Right, work. exactly. No, oh, no, I've, I've been in that position before. Right. You know what I mean, so I'm going to take him very seriously and uh, I'm, I, I take him very seriously. That's all I got to say. One of the things that is uh, somewhat interesting, like when I look at everything is like, you're at this like other chapter of your of your career where on the regional scene you are going to be either the co-main event or the main event on every single one of these fights. Sure. And and I've and I, I really wanted to know, Will, like at the beginning of your career when you were an undercard dude, and a lot of the good people that uh, follow me and listen to the podcast, they're amateur fighters, they're undercard people. Okay. Right. So can you talk a little bit about like what was that like, like fighting on undercards compared to like the main event, because like how you mentally prepare, it's got to be completely different. Yeah, I remember, I still remember my first couple of amateur fights, you know, I was scared shitless, it's all natural stuff, you know what I mean? I had the world on my shoulder, I thought, and I remember I used to think like the main event fighter was like, like the biggest, the biggest celebrity <laughs> ever. I won right. I'm so bad. But at the same time, I remember I seen Whisper Goodman come in, I fought King of the Cage, this is when Sam Elby and I were still training partners. And like it was in 2009, and if you look up my Instagram, I got an old uh, poster from it. Mm-hmm. But I remember seeing him. He was like, you know, he's a stud back then. Whisper Goodman, like he was, he was. I think he 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 ended up being like 12 and 12, like 500 record. But at the time, like he was the main event fighter. Right, right. Player ass, all white, booyah, jumpsuit on, and oh, that's Whisper. I heard every. I was like, man, that's where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And like a couple years later, that's all I've been fighting. So. And I guess the whole hindsight now looking back as like a main event fighter, now I kind of wish I was, cause I want to get those fights out of, man, you do not want to wait to the end. It's just still to this day, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 it's draining. You know what I mean? So there's, there's not a time that I'm not like, damn, I wish I was number one fighter or number one fight or somebody hit me in the head with a bottle as I'm walking also around the fight. Man, I feel like that. <laughs> well, it's, well, it's kind of interesting because I also talked to uh, uh, other fighters and, 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 one of my friends, she's about to make her pro debut soon. Aww, and I'm really excited for her. And she's just like, I think I'm like the first or second fight of the night. She's like in and out. It's going to be beautiful. Like, uh, it, it, because depending on like, especially for some of the local shows, yep. even as an am, you could still be the co-main event because then the, the main event will be the pros. Right. So she's just right. like, she's like, typically I have to wait a really long time to fight. She's like, I'm actually excited. I can get in there, the throw all my shit down, Man. warm you up, fight, fight yeah. and get out. She's like, it's going to be great. And I'm like, that's, I never really thought of it that way. Absolutely. Get in and get out, man. Like just relax. Cause you know, she don't have no time to have all the jitters and shit. Because when you're sitting back there, everything's running through your mind. Yeah. Train hard enough. Am I ready? You can't lie to yourself. And that's why I love training hard, but you know, Man, to go back to the days where I can go. I mean, I'm blessed to be where I'm at. Don't, I'm not taking nothing. I appreciate that stuff. But to go back to the one hitter quitter, get in and get out, man. That, man that's there, awesome. there, there, there's something beautiful about that, right? Something beautiful about that. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, you know, the weight's off your shoulders. You can relax. And, man, good for her. Oh, I don't know who she is, but good luck to her. And uh, I, I, I hope her all, all the success. So. Mariah Castro. She's making a pro debut. Mariah, that's my, what's, her last, what's her last name? Castro. Ma- Mariah Castro. Good luck. Uh, all your feelings are mutual from a pro fighter, and uh, I know you're gonna do great. So good luck to you. I well, it'll be on TV. She's fighting on Combate Global, so check it oh, out. Oh, she is. Yep. Um, I got a uh, one of my NFC GT 
family member, she fights on there. She's ranked number seven in the women's. She just snapped somebody's arm. She was a monster. We go over to NFGT. Uh, her name is uh, Somers or, oh, I got. Pol- she called, they call her Mama BJJ. That's how I know her as, Mama BJJ. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Summers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know. She's a monster, man. She just snaps Combat Global. She's a monster. She ranked number seven. I, I didn't know her real name because I only go off her Instagram. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to all them. That's a great promotion, man. Good for her. Good. Hey, and uh, call up my boy here because after this fight, we're looking. So, yeah. hey, keep him in mind. Will, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you just – with this fight at the end of the month, I know we're not looking past the sky and pretty much like your year is probably stopped in your mind after July 30th, right? But when we go into August, when we go into like the rest of the year, is it realistic for us to to expect you to fight again? Or do you think you're going to take the rest of the year off? Like what's kind of like your notional plan? Well, it's, it's on my manager. Um, I'm not, it, it, it kind of stinks. I'm like a two-headed sword right now. I'm on such a microscope. That mm-hmm. even if I win and I look like shit, I go backwards. Right. Well, I got to go in there, be dominant, and then I get the call. But if I don't go in there, I look mediocre and look not as up to my ability, then I got to go defend my Oklahoma title. Mm-hmm. So we're hoping. So I guess your answer your question, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not putting, I'm stepping on the gas. I'm going full gore. So after this win, we're going to see what's next. And if it's got to be one more win, then we're going to jump straight to Beltor. So Wait, I, I'd love to see that. Anthony Pettis has a promotion too. He's just starting up in, yeah, in they Wisconsin. They got to hold me, but I had this fight. So shout out to them for getting a hold of me. I appreciate that. I know they got the, the big one coming up. Uh, our boy Funky Bones Jones is fighting on there. So yeah, they got a hold of me. Shout out to them. So I had this fight because I think it's like a week after, two weeks after mine. So shout out to them. So. Hey, maybe you clip this guy in 30 minutes or 30 seconds, and right? And, and, and he doesn't even hit you. And then it's like, well, shit, like hey, I can let's, still, let's go. I'm already in shape. Let's go. I I'd love that. that. I love that. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Will, as always, man, I appreciate your time. I'm not going to keep you anymore, but I want to give you a chance. I know that you have a lot of sponsors. I know you have people that work with you. I want to give you a chance to (laughs) shout them out um, and say whatever else it is that you want to say before I let you roll. First of all, shout out to you, everybody at Mom's Basement. Man, I appreciate everything you gave me this platform. Um, A lot of people don't understand me, but you do. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Everybody at Red Shapers. Red himself, uh, all my teammates over there, Timmy, Brandon, uh, Coach B, my beautiful girlfriend. Thank you, Stephanie. I love you. Miss Nicola, NCMG team management. Thank you, Miss Nicola. I could not have done this without you. You took a shot at me when nobody else would, and we're about to fulfill our dream. All my fans, everybody that clicks my story, I see every, I, I know every day I see the same clippings. I know who clicks on my story. Thank you so much for the support. All my critics and all my sponsors, Mikey Meg, you know, Mom's Basement, Cat Kick Sports, CBD department. Oh, man, I didn't write this down. Uh, <laughs> I think there's two other ones if I forgot to. I'm so sorry. I'm on Instagram. I got you guys on Instagram all over the place. But um, thank you guys so much. And to you. And I can't wait to talk to you again. Um, let's get this W in two weeks. And uh, let's keep the train rolling. Thank hey, you guys. W's the fuck up. Here we go.